over here in the middle right in the middle this is your alternator the alternator is mounted to the engine you know it's your alternator because you got your positive and negative connecting wires the wires are properly connected you have no cut frayed or exposed electrical wire the alternator is driven by a belt serpentine belt when you pull the belt it should not have more than three quarters of an inch of play the condition of the belt the belts cannot be worn torn cut or frayed all right the job of the alternator is to charge the battery when the engine is on this is your ac compressor your air conditioning compressor this is what produces air for the air conditioning system right and it keeps the AC system running good driven by the same belt same serpentine belt all right over here this is your radiator housing radiator housing radiator housing is mounted to the main frame the radiator is in the housing all right the radiator cannot be leaking if you have any leaks in the radiator you'll see coolant on the ground all right and the job of the radiator is when the weather is hot the radiator keeps the engine cool when the engine when the weather is cold it keeps the engine block from freezing all right also here this is your fan blade housing the fan blade housing is mounted to the radiator housing you got no broken or missing fan blades all right over here is your main frame. Your main frame is not cracked or welded. Right? And there cannot be any holes there. If there's holes there, they have to come from the dealer like that. You cannot drill any holes in there once you bought the, the vehicle. Alright? So don't forget the main frame is not cracked or welded. No holes. Unless they came from the dealer like that. Alright. Over here, you got your leaf spring hanger. Leaf spring hanger. Right? No cracks, no welding, bolted to the main frame. Over here, you got no missing bolts. And you got another leaf spring hanger there. All right? So don't forget the leaf spring hanger is bolted to the main frame. No cracks, no welding, no missing bolts. You got a bolt here, you got a bolt there. These are your leaf springs. Leaf springs, none missing, none cracked, no scissoring, no shifting. This right here, these are U-bolts. The U-bolts are bolted to the axle. There should be no loose or missing bolts. All right? If you were on your back and you looked up, you'd see four bolts. The bolts, again, they cannot be loose or missing. This way over here, that's your shock absorber. All right? The shock absorber is mounted to the main frame at the top and at the axle at the bottom. The uh, shock absorbers cannot be bent. It cannot be leaking. All right? Not bent, not leaking. Over here, you have your brake holes. Your brake holes. No abrasions, bruises, no cuts, and no air leaks for the brake holes. This is your ABS line. That line is connected to a sensor. If there's a problem with the ABS sensor, you get a light on the dash. All right? So don't forget, this is your ABS line, not cut, frayed, or exposed. Connected to a sensor. This is your slack adjuster, and this is your push rod. All right? But don't forget, brake holes goes to the brake chamber. Brake chamber is not cracked. It's not leaking. And it's at a 90 degree angle. All right? Don't forget that. And like I said, ABS line, no cut, frayed, or exposed. Slack adjuster, push rod. When the brakes are off and you pull the slack adjuster, you should have no more than one inch of play on the push rod. All right? When the brakes are off and you pull the slack adjuster, the push rod should not move more than one inch. All right, over here. You got your windshield washer fluid. The cap is tight. It's not cracked or leaking. 
and it should be at normal operating level. We should add some. The here it's connected to a sensor. When the level gets low, you get a light on the dashboard that tells you to add windshield washer fluid. This rubber hose here connects to the wiper. So you press the wash button, it squirts out. Alright? Now over here, you got your inner and outer tire. There's no cuts, no bulges. Tread should be worn evenly. You cannot have different tires. If I got a snow tire here, I got a snow tire there. Alright, also in here, you got your inner rim. Your inner rim should not be cracked or welded. Alright, also down there, you got brake drum. Alright? You should have no dirt, oil, dust, any type of debris down there. Alright, also, you got something called brake linings. Your brake linings should not be thinner than one quarter of an inch. Alright? You really can't see it. It's all internal. But just let the inspector know your brake linings cannot be thinner than one quarter of an inch. And don't forget your brake drum. No dirt, oil, no dust, no type of debris down there. And your inner rim, not cracked or welded. All right, inner and outer tire, no cuts, no bulges. Tread that, no less than 432. Front tires, you cannot recap or retread. Tire is properly mounted to the rim. Rim is not cracked, dented, or welded. All your lugs, they have to be there, all right? Tight, no rust trails, no shiny threads. Rust trails or shiny threads, they indicate that a lug is loose. All right, don't forget, no rust trails, no shiny threads. You have a hub seal here. The hub seal cannot be cracked or leaking. All right, and there cannot be any missing bolts or nuts. Valve step, that's where you put the air in the tire. should have a cap on it, all right? And the valve step cannot be cut. There cannot be any air leaks coming from the valve step. All right, the tire, it looks properly inflated, right? We don't know if it's properly inflated unless we use a tire air pressure gauge to test the air pressure, all right? Front tires, you normally inflate from 100 to 120 PSI, all right? Don't forget that. Inflate from 100 to 120 PSI. Only know if it's properly inflated if you use the tire air pressure gauge. Alright? And now, uh, we got more stuff in here. Alright. Over here, you see this hose? Which is clamped. This hose comes from the radiator. Follow the hose, it takes you to the water pump. All right? The water pump is belt driven. All right? Don't forget that. You follow this hose. No abrasions, bulges, cuts, and no leaks. It takes you to the water pump. The water pump is belt driven. All right? This is your most important item right here. That's your air compressor. Air compressor is mounted to the engine. It's connected to an air governor. Of course, the job of the air compressor is to produce air for the air braking system. All right? It is gear driven. All right? Gear driven. And of course, there cannot be any air leaks coming from the air compressor or any of its components. All right. Now, over here, you've got two dipsticks. One there for oil, one there for transmission fluid. When you check in the engine oil level, the engine should be off. The engine should be cool. You pull out the dipstick, wipe it, push it back in, pull it out. If you need to add oil, you get a funnel to add the oil up there. Transmission fluid, when you check that, the engine should be on. The engine should be hot. Same thing, you pull it out, wipe it off, push it back in, pull it out. 
you need to add transmission fluid. You get a funnel and you add it over here. All right? These are your color-coded airlines right here. Color-coded airlines. They're not cut, they're not cracked, and they're properly mounted to the fittings. All right? And there's no air leaks coming from the color-coded airlines. No audible air leaks. You don't hear any. All right? So again, no air coming from the color-coded airlines. This is your electrical area. The electrical harness area. It appears to be in good condition. No cut, frayed, or exposed electrical wire. No burn fuses. All right? It's in good condition. All right. Now over here, we're going to check some of the steering items. This is your steering shaft. Steering shaft is not bent, broken, cracked. Steering shaft has a universal joint here and another universal joint hidden under the sleeve. They're supposed to be properly lubricated, the universal joints. Properly greased. All right. When I go like this, I should have no more than 10 degrees of play. All right. Your steering shaft goes into the steering gearbox. The steering gearbox is bolted to the main frame. All right? You got no missing nuts or bolts. And there's no leaks coming from the steering gearbox. All right? Don't forget, bolted to the main frame. No missing nuts or bolts. No cracks, no leaks. Then the pitman arm. The pitman arm is mounted to the steering gearbox. At the bottom, you got a castle nut and cotter pin. All right? Over here. What is that part called? That is your drag link. All right? Steering gear rocks, pitman arm, drag link. Drag link is not cracked or damaged. All right. Over here. You follow the drag link. It'll take you to your upper control arm. All right? Upper control arm. It's not cracked or damaged. At the rear, you got something called the tie rod. See that thing that goes from both axles? called the tie rod. The purpose of the tie rod is when you turn the wheels left, both wheels turn left at the same time. When you turn right, both wheels turn right at the same time. All right? Tie rod cannot be broken, cracked, or damaged. And the tips, the tips of the hardware, they got to be in good condition. No damage or missing hardware. All right. This right here is your power steering fluid reservoir. All right? not cracked or leaking. You should be at normal level. Cap should be on tight. Follow this hose, which is securely clamped. No abrasions, bulges, bruises, or cuts. And no leaks. Alright? You follow this hose here, it'll take you to the power steering pump. The power steering pump is gear driven. So the only thing that's gear driven is the power steering pump and the air compressor. Alright? And of course, the power steering pump is not leaking. Because if it were leaking, you'd see power steering fluid on the ground. All right? You do that, you will pass your underhood inspection. All right? You better start learning those items. Okay. All right. Close the hood.